equivalent resistance in parallel. Let me revise what we have done in the last slide. There were three resistors exactly like this. And what we did? We assume the voltage difference is V A minus V B. Same thing I am taking here also. And let us say current I is there and we split the current I into I1, I2 and I3 and finally sum up. Now if I say same current I is here and same current I is here. Firstly, I will tell you to distribute this I in these three resistances. Just think yourself and please distribute the current I in these three resistances. Here what we have done, this R2 is shorted. It means we have connected a shunt across the R2, negligible resistance. So listen, you will say no current will pass through any resistance, okay? because all the current will pass through this bypass, because this is the low resistance path. Now if I write the equation V A minus I R equivalent equal to V B, so what is my R equivalent? It will be V A minus V B upon I. Okay, it is clear and it should be equal to 0 because there is no resistance path. So, all the current will bypass, there is no resistance. It is clear to all of you. So, if any branch in the parallel resistance circuit is short, shorted, net resistance or equivalent resistance of the circuit will be 0. Now, tell me which resistance in series and parallel? I think it is very easy for you. So, let me finish it fast. Is it okay? In first R1 and uh, sorry R2 and R3 in parallel and R1 in series. In second diagram R2 and R3 in series and then they are parallel with R1. Okay. You have to tell me what is the equivalent resistance of the circuit and what is the current through each resistance. You pause the video and solve yourself. Now listen, this is my circuit. I hope it is visible to all of you. This 6 and 3 in parallel, so they can be converted to 2. Why? Because we know in the parallel that is given by 6 into 3, 18 upon 6 plus 3, 9, 18 by 9 is 2. Now 4 plus 2, this that is in series 6 ohm. What is the net current? That is 3 ampere. Is it okay? Now, what is the net voltage that is 18 volt and that is exactly equal to the external supply. Now, we have to distribute the 18 volt. Is it okay? In 4 ohm and 2 ohm, V could I R 12 volt and 6 volt. Now, I have to distribute this 6 volt also between 6 and 3. Is it okay? Why we have written 1 ampere, 2 ampere? I think all of you know V equal to I R. Voltage is same across B and C end. So, voltage is same at 6 ohm and at 3 ohm. It means what you will say? I is proportional to 1 by R. So, what I will say? I1 by I2 equal to I2 by R1. It means current will distribute in the ratio 3 is to 6. So, if I say this is the current I1, this is the current I2, I will say I1 by I2 equal to 3 by 6 or 1 is to 2. You can think in this way or you can think in voltage form also. Here the voltage is 6 volt. I equal to V by R 6 by 6, 6 by 3. Any method either you can take the ratio or you can directly think with the V equal to I R. Now, I say there are two light bulb. One light bulb is across A and B, another is across B and C, both the bulb having resistance. Now, you have to tell me current through each resistance. Of course, power I will not discuss 
right now but if you have a little bit knowledge of class 10 you can solve it is it okay current is okay power equal to i square r net resistance is 4 2 plus 2 4 and net current is 2 2 square is 4 so 4 you can say let me write here i square means 2 square and resistance is 4 you will get 16 volt again there are two bulb they are in parallel one bulb both the bulb are having same resistance so we are saying same current is flowing because that is a parallel combination R equivalent 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 net current again P equal to I square R. Now, all of you solve it. Pause the video, solve yourself, then I will discuss. Here we have given that the electric current I equal to 5 ampere is divided into three branches that is in parallel combination this is the three resistance they are in parallel ok the length of the wire in the three branches in the ratio is this we have given l1 is to l2 is to l3 2 is to 3 is to 4 and we have given the diameter also d1 is to d2 is to d3 3 is to 4 is to 5. Now, we have to calculate the current in each branch, wire is of same material, it means resistivity is same. Okay. So, we know the formula R equal to rho L by A. Firstly, I calculate the resistance and I can see the rho L area is pi R square, but here diameter is given to me. So, R equal to D by 2, if I use that I will get 4 rho L upon pi D square. What you will say R depends on length because 4 and rho is constant, pi is constant and D square. So, now I will write R 1 is to R 2 is to R 3. What I get? L is 2 and D 1 is square. So, I will say 9 then L is 3 D 2 square is 16 then L is 4 in 5 square is 25 okay now it is a parallel combination and in parallel combination we all know very well according to v equal to ir v is constant ir is constant and when ir is constant i can say i1 is to i2 is to i3 can be written as 1 upon r1 1 upon r2 1 upon r3 so i1 is to i2 is to i3 1 upon r1 can be written as that is 9 by 2 that is 16 by 3 that is 25 by 4 okay now i write i1 is to i2 is to i3 what i will get i think we can say lcm we take 12 okay right 12 so, to make it 12, we have to multiply by 6. So, 9 into 6 is 54. To make it 12, 3 into 4, 16 into 4, again I think 64. Okay. And here, to make it 12, 4 into 3, so it is 75. Now, it is very simple. You have the net current I is 5 ampere. And you have to divide then I1, I2 and I3. Okay. Please do yourself. It is a simple calculation. Please solve yourself and after that, after solving, I think you will get the value of the I1, I2 and I3 as shown. I think I1 should be 1.4 ampere and I2 should be 1.66 ampere and I3 should be equal to, I think it should be 1.94 ampere. Okay. So, all of you go through it. Okay, I am showing the slides also. In, I think you will get this result. Kirchhoff law. First law, you will say Kirchhoff current law. This explains conservation of charge. 
as we have discussed earlier sum of all current meeting at a junction is equal to 0. So, you will say algebraic sum of electric current at a junction in any electric network is always 0 like I say here this is the O point where in this way there are some current some current are entering at the point O junction O some current are leaving. So, you can say entering current that is I 1 plus I 4 this must be equal to leaving current I 2 plus I 3 plus I 5 or you can say net sum of current meeting at a junction is 0. So, you will say I 1 plus I 4 minus I 2 minus I 3 minus I 5 is 0. Incoming current towards the junction are taken positive and outgoing current away from the junction are taken as negative. or you can say the charge cannot accumulate at a junction the number of charge that arrive at a junction in a given time must equal to you can say must leave in the same time in accordance with conservation of charge. So, first row explain conservation of charge. Second law I will say it is a KVN I think it is not written let us write here I am typing error. So, I will say it is KVN voltage. The algebraic sum of all the potential drop and EMF along any closed path in an electric network is always 0. Let me draw the diagram. There are two cells, three resistance in the circuit and suppose battery first is giving current I 1, 2 is giving current I 2 and then this is I 1 plus I 2 in this Okay. Suppose I say clockwise path here, what I will get when I start from this point, I will say minus even against the direction of flow current I move because you are moving clockwise, you will say here plus I1 R1 again against the current flow plus I1 plus I2 into R2. Let again you see this triangle clockwise path. Again, you please write the equation. Pause the video and write yourself. Okay. Before writing sign convention, let me write loop equation for the path A, B, C, D, A. Suppose I start from point A, where I move against the direction of flow current. Here, I will say it is minus E1 and I will say plus I 1 R 1, then you I am going along the direction of flow of current voltage drop. So, you will say minus I 2 R 2, you are moving inside the battery same direction plus E 2, this should be equal to 0. So, sign convention exactly same rule, the EMF is taken negative when we move from positive to negative terminal that I have discussed you please do it yourself. Path can be taken clockwise or anticlockwise. Now, again I am revising it. A junction is a point where three or more conductors meet. I have underlined this three. I want to mention it. Like this C point is not a junction. Some of you must be thinking this C is a junction. It is not like this. That is why I have drawn underlined here. A junction is a point where three or more conductors meet. You can say B is the junction. C is not junction. D is not junction. It is a junction because there are three conductors are meeting. Junction word is clear. Because at the junction you can apply the Kirchhoff first law. Sum of all current meeting at the junction is 0. A loop is any closed conducting path. I hope we have drawn here for three loops. Loop 1, external, then there are two loops inside. Loop always start and end at the same point. You just see first loop starting and again ending here. Second loop starting, ending again here. Third loop and fourth loop. Kirchhoff first loop again I will say particular first rule 
the algebraic sum of current waiting at a junction is 0, summation i equal to 0 or incoming current equal to outgoing current. You can think water pipe analogy, the flow rate of water leaving the pipe equal the flow rate entering. Second derivative, KVL. The algebraic sum of potential difference in any loop must be equal to 0. Okay. And this explains conservation of energy, summation V equal to 0. When you move along the direction of flow of current in the battery, there is gain in potential energy, but again that is EMF and potential difference means loss in energy. Sign convention again I am telling you. When you move negative to positive, like first diagram, you will say plus E. In the second diagram, you will say it is minus E. Okay. Simply you can understand charging and discharging the same also. Along the direction of flow of current, if you move minus I R, opposite you move, you will say it is plus I R. Okay. Give okay, you a doubt again. I am telling you just a bit here. Okay, just listen. I say this is the first battery, this is the second battery. Okay, suppose you are moving like this in this diagram, you are moving like this. Suppose you are assuming the path that is the anti clockwise. And here you are using the clockwise path, something like this, suppose. Okay. Now here this is positive and this is negative. This is positive and this is negative. All of you are intelligent. This is the direction of flow of current. In this situation, you are moving along the direction of flow of current. So you will say it is plus E. Here you are moving opposite direction of flow of current, you will say minus E. Now it is clear. No doubt. Okay, we will solve some numerical, you will get better idea. Again, here, if this is the resistance, current I is flowing. If you move in this direction, you will say minus I R. But in the same resistance, same current, same direction, and you move like this, gain in potential plus I R. These are sign conventions basically, which you are supposed to know. Reducing the unknown currents. In the first diagram, I have taken I1, I2, and I3. In second diagram, I can write I3 is junction rule, I1 plus I2. So, I require less equation. You know, number of unknown must be equal to number of equations. Now, I am giving you a question. With the help of the Kirchhoff current law, there is a first law. Calculate the current through each resistance. First of all, you just try to solve it, then pause the video and after solving, again listen me. Suppose I say here is the 20 volt and here is the 0 volt because 20 volt is the potential difference. Okay. And let I say current is flowing here, the current is say I I1, here the current is I2, here the current is I3. Okay. Again, here this is sum of I2 and I3, this is I1. No problem. Suppose we take a junction, this is a junction. Junction I told you where 3 or more than 3 conductor meet. And Kirchhoff current law says sum of all outgoing current should be 0 or sum of all incoming current should be 0. We say sum of all outgoing current should be 0. What is outgoing current here? You will say I2 plus I3. I1 is incoming current. What is outgoing minus I1? This should be equal to 0. Okay. Now, what is I2? I say here is the 0 volt. This is also 0 volt. This is also 20 volt. What I will get? X minus 0 0.3 x minus 0 upon 6, x minus 20 upon 4, 
equal to 0. You solve for x. When you solve for the x, you will get, I think it is 60 by 9, so I can say 20 by 3 volt. Potential of x is null. Now, it is very easy for you to calculate I1, I2, I3 because you know the potential of this point. If I write the I2, I2 is nothing but x minus 0 upon 3, what is x? 20 by 3 upon 3, what I will say? 20 by 9 ampere. Okay, what is I3? Again, x by 6, you will solve yourself, x is 20 by 3. I think 20 by 18 or you can say 10 by 9 ampere. Then what is I1? Again you will say 20 minus x upon resistance is 4 and you will solve yourself. I think you will get 10 by 3 ampere. Is it okay? Then we move to the next situation. Okay, Here you have to use both KCL and KVL and you have to calculate the current through each resistance. Solid.